Join us as career changers, company leaders, industry experts, and others who have been in your shoes share their stories, insights, and lessons learned to help you find enjoyment through employment in the tech world. I'm Nemo Ashong, and this is the Employment Podcast. Hey, yo, employees. You know, one of the difficult things about making a podcast like Employment, where we really focus on joy and helping you see how you can be your best self and make that come out in your work so that things are just nice and easy and, you know, you're experiencing that level of excitement that few people are able to get in their work experience. Well, one of the most challenging things about it, especially from a podcast perspective, is wondering whether or not anyone out there is listening. You know, and I think that's a, I just, I'm going to put it out there because if I cannot be honest with you, I cannot hope for you to be honest with me. And that's what we need if we're really going to be able to make the strides that we need for our career and for our lives. And I bring this up here because today you're going to get a chance to listen to an amazing conversation with Amanda Oliver. And Amanda has done some incredible things in her journey. But as you'll hear, she faced some high levels of rejection as she was making her transition into writing in tech. And I think that this story is incredibly important because Amanda made this transition at a time that was incredibly difficult for her. You'll hear her describe it as rock bottom. And in the midst of this time, this difficult time for her, she still went through and added on top of that additional rejection with 2,000 application and over 260 interviews to find her enjoyment. And the greatest part about it, the coolest part about all that, because I know that it was, it must have been quite a difficult time, is that now she's on the show sharing how awesome things are for her. And I don't want at any point with enjoyment to make this seem easier than it actually is. Let's be real. What we, what we talk about here, being true to yourself, figuring out who you are, figuring out what you want, figuring how you can add value to an organization, even if you've never done the role before, or if you've been accelerated in your career faster than everyone else around you, and you're sitting kind of isolated as one of like the top performers in everything you touch, and you're like, I don't know what to do next. We have all these, the spectrum is so wide when it comes to people looking to find enjoyment. And at the end of the day, what brings us together is that we're dissatisfied with what we currently have because we know we can have so much more. But with that, and I'll just in the spirit of being real with you all, one of my greatest fears with enjoyment and a line that I try and walk, hopefully not to anyone's disservice here, is to make sure that I balance the aspect of constantly seeking more joy, constantly seeking what you don't have, rather than being able to be in a place with what you do have, find enjoyment through that, find a level of satisfaction in that, and then from that place of fulfillment moving forward to obtain even higher levels. When I'm out here right now in Singapore making this episode, and when I made this bold move here, it was at a place where I was already feeling great about my life, my work, my friends. I was in I was in the groove. I had and I was challenging myself every day and working on things that excited me every day. And yet there was still something more out there. And that love that the thing that was more, it's funny, it might seem that it was about traveling or going to Asia or or running my own business. And to be honest, if I'm honest with you all, that's not the extra level. All those things are nice. But for me in particular, the true enjoyment that I'm feeling right now is really knowing that I've created a place where my wife and I can have a future where whatever she wants to do, I can be there side by side with her without having to worry about what what does that mean for me or what does that mean for the family? This gives us more flexibility as a unit. And in doing so, some of the great benefits of it right now are being able to travel all throughout Southeast Asia or being able to sit and talk to you all here. But I, when I really look at it, like the reason that this brings me so much joy is because I get to talk about things that I really, really care about. And in doing so, I can continue to be the person in this relationship that I want to be. And I'm going to put all that out there for you, employees, because in case you haven't realized this year, enjoyment is not the place for surface level. I don't do surface very well. I ask all the guests life, love, work, passions before we start the episode and really dive into their story. And that question came up one day at a party one of my friends was throwing. So on the rooftop here in, in New York City, and I was surrounded by friends and I just felt this sense of like, I don't want to hear what you do on a day to day. 
I want to hear what lights you up. And let's talk about that. Life, love, work, passion. Go. That was it. And if you're listening to this podcast and you two are ready for some deeper aspects, there are a lot of places you can go to find more commonly talked about scenarios and struggles with making any kind of career advancement or career development. But there's something special here and there's something special about you in the sense that you're looking for more than just that. Otherwise, you can get that point solution anywhere. So keep that in mind as you listen to today's conversation, because we're willing to go there when it comes to enjoyment. We're willing to go there as employees. And it's been one of the most fantastic things about spending time with people one on one in the enjoyment exploration coaching sessions. I mean, we're spending significant time going through and saying and understanding what people are, are about, what they want out of their journey and how they can start figuring out things. In fact, you'll find with me, I'm I'm less about information and more about application. You can always find information out there. And I'd like to say that enjoyment is a place where you can find the things you can't Google about. And you can't Google yourself in the same kind of and just get the answer as to what comes next. That's something that takes time. And quite frankly, one of the things that I love most about those codes and sessions is that I get a chance to help you explore and pull out what you already are feeling. You are whole. You are awesome. You are amazing. And during these conversations, I get to be a mirror for all of that so that you can see yourself as you truly are and use that vision to then move forward with what will truly bring you joy in life and work. And that, my friends, is so much fun. So I'm going to invite you to come and have one of those conversations with me. I'm going to invite actually, I'm going to invite you to give yourself a chance to change the trajectory of where your life is headed by having a deep and powerful conversation with me while I still have these opportunities. Soon we'll be moving to workshops and I'll be doing a whole lot of things over in uh, more group and community style base. But for right now, I have this unique chance to work directly with you. And I invite you to come take advantage of that. You can do that by going over to enjoyment.com slash coaching. And I have a brief application where you can go ahead and fill out and let me know how that you're serious about this. Are you committed to working with yourself? I block out a lot of time for this here. I'm only looking to work with people who are committed. And if, and if that's not you right now, that's totally fine. Keep listening to the podcast. Find us over in the enjoyment community. And we'll, and when you're ready, we'll be there enjoyment.com slash coaching. We'll see you for a one-on-one session this week. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into this conversation with Amanda. There's so much you're going to be able to pull from this and so much you're going to be able to learn. So have fun and enjoy. Why, hello there, employees. Welcome to the Enjoyment Podcast, where we're focused on helping people just like you find enjoyment through employment. And employees, we have something special for you today because we have Amanda Oliver on the podcast. Amanda, would you like to say hello to employees today? Hello, everybody. I love that opening. That that got me excited. I'm feeling jazzed up now. That is I'm, exactly uh, where we want you I to I want to like go run through a brick wall or something. Yes. No. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I think. I think. I think that's awesome because like like when I when I what's coming to mind is like a visual of like this this energy that's just taking you through that brick wall. And there are a lot yeah, of employees exactly. out there that right now might be feeling like they're up against the wall that they don't know how to go through it and they don't have to go around it or whatever. And you know if we can bring that energy and just put it through this podcast, I think we're gonna have uh, a lot of fun here and a lot of value for employees. Sound like a plan to you? Sounds good. Yeah, we'll be like that. Uh, I don't know if you remember those Kool Aid commercials where yeah. like the Kool Aid man breaks yes. through and he's like, "What did I get? Oh what did yeah, he say? oh yeah." <laughs> so Kool Aid. We'll be the Kool Aid man uh, for this podcast. I like that. I like that. I'm, I'm now thinking about that that nice refreshing <laughs> aspect of it and, and that power yeah. coming through. So like. Amanda, you're on this show because you're a powerful person. You have so much going, going through it. And even right off the bat, you're, you're bringing that out to light. Can you let us know a little bit of, uh, about you? We're going to get into your personal life a little bit uh, in a little bit here. But I'd like to understand, like, like who are you from like a professional standpoint? Tell us a little bit more about that. And then we'll get into some of the things that you can do um, for fun. Absolutely. So from a professional standpoint, right now, I work for a tech company in Boston called Orion CKB. And we're named Orion because uh, originally the parent company was named Constellation. So uh, the nerd in me, the nerd that wanted to go to space camp, or not wanted to go to space camp, I did go to space camp. I also went to space academy. Um, And so I wanted to be an astronaut until I realized you had to be really good at science and math. And I'm not really good at science and math. So 
it worked out that I end up working for a company that's named after a constellation. But for the company, what we do is digital advertising. And so we do everything from Facebook to, you know, Twitter to, um, I'm trying to think of all the, all the different, you know, Snapchat, Instagram, we do Google, we do, you know, we do all any, basically anywhere you can be doing, uh, social media. We work with companies to, you know, optimize their ads and get their ads out there. Now that's the technical side. That's where the, the sort of math science people are. And then what I do is I work on the marketing side and my official title is content and brand strategist. But basically, as they call me in the office, I'm the writer, uh, whether it's the text on the website, uh, whether it's, you know, putting out PR pieces, whether it's putting out stuff on our blog, I write the employee bios on our website. Um, you know, I help write sales collateral. It's if it's written, there's a pretty good chance that if I I wrote it or if I didn't write it, I helped edit it, help make it flow. Because uh, while many of our the people that I work with are very smart, and they are, I mean, like we have Harvard grads and MIT grads that we work with, uh, they're not maybe the best at, at writing, which is where I come in. And so I, I help translate, I joke that I translate what we do to the public. So I help take a lot of sort of the more technical aspects of how we optimize the ads that go on Facebook and that kind of thing and take them, you know, and explain it to a wider audience. So we work with companies that are large enough to be able to outsource this and spend a significant amount of money, but at the same time, not so large that they can bring it in house. And so Basically, that's my my day job. My full time job is being the writer for that and translating the technical aspects of what we do and turning it into something exciting, something engaging, something that's going to get people, you know, hyped about uh, about doing digital advertising. So that's really awesome, and it's like it's pretty interesting here. Uh, I, I like 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 how you phrase it. Like that's my day job here, and I like how you also said um, the the official name is content. Yeah slash brand strategist. But at the end of the day, you feel like you're the writer. And what, what was interesting to me is, um, you know, especially here at Enjoyment, like we have a lot of people that are looking for that next step in their, their career. And like, you just gave me this like really awesome, like, you know, uh, technical <laughs> job title that like, you know, that feels like, you know, this, <laughs> this could be so much you're like, look, what I do is I write, but like, right. but then you took it a step further. And this is the place where I like, I want for us to be able to play during today's conversation here, you took it out of this thing like, yeah, I'm just the writer. Uh, and you really broke it down to like, what do you do? What is your value that, that you bring to the organization? And you're like, I translate what we do to the public. You yep. know, I, I help all, all these people who are so smart in their own world and their own regards. Awesome. I help other people understand that, you know? Uh, and we talk here at, at, at Enjoyment about like the idea of like, you know, a lot of people we, were, all, we're looking for what specific role, what title do I need? What's going on there? And we like to also focus about a lot on like, what problem are you trying to solve? What value do you bring to the table? And if you can figure that out, um, then that, that can work out for you in a lot of different ways. I can see myself in the same type of role of like translating what, 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 <laughs> what we do to the public, but I would do it with like a video and podcast because like I can exactly. write. I'm just a slow writer, yeah. you know? <laughs> Uh, and see, that's the thing. Like, I bust out pieces. I was laughing with my mom earlier about the fact that I wrote a piece for the Huffington Post uh, over the weekend, and I wrote it in 20 minutes. And, you know, it was one of those things that I just got, I actually got frustrated. I was annoyed. And I tend to write when I'm feeling, you know, if I'm excited, or it's it has to be some heightened emotion usually. But when I'm annoyed, you know, I I just... I got it out in 20 minutes and then it was up. And so it worked out. It worked out well. But yeah, it's funny because, uh, you know, I just writing is my thing, but I also love talking. And so I uh, I started a podcast for our company as well. But yeah, it's, it's basically our marketing team is me and my boss, who's the VP of marketing. So and we actually know that's a lot. We now have a marketing associate that we recently hired. So all three of us. So that's why it's a little bit more scrappy. But uh, I like that because then you're kind of all hands on deck. Well, congrats on the podcast. What's a, what's your company's podcast? Yeah. If anybody's super interested in digital, uh, social advertising, come check out up your ROAS and ROAS stands for return on ad spend. So spelled R O A S. So up your ROAS by Ryan CKB. If you're really interested, I'm not going to lie. It, it's probably going to be pretty boring for people that aren't into uh, digital advertising. But if you are uh, into direct response advertising, this should be your uh, your, your next listen. Awesome. And, and I'm going to encourage you, like, if you're like, I'm not sure 
if I am or not, or I'm not sure where my, where my interests are and all that. Like, this is a really interesting, really easy way and interesting way to be able to get a taste of what that might look like and what that, that might be. It might be on a, a more advanced level than what you know right now. Uh, but it could be something that, 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 um, helps you discover more about what you're looking for and where your passion is and what will bring you more enjoyment. So, uh, man, I'm happy we brought that up, brought that up here. We've been able to talk about your life professionally so far, but like, we know that there's more to Amanda than just that. So we'd love to, uh, find out more about your life, love, work, and passion. Would you mind sharing with that with us? Absolutely. So I have been happily married, uh, for it will be six years on New Year's Eve. Um, and ladies out there, having your wedding anniversary on a holiday smart because he never forgets the date um or she you know whoever uh, but whoever you marry if you do it on a holiday they don't forget the date so and it's always a great excuse at least for us to throw a party so that's been great um and honestly i owe being a writer to my husband he's the one who actually encouraged me to to write he noticed how much i loved it he noticed how passionate i was about it and in my head at first, I was thinking, you know, you have to be Stephen King or, you know, J.K. Rowling to be a writer. And so I didn't think I could be a writer until my husband kept encouraging me and saying, you know, no, you should really like you should do it. You should do it. So uh, shout out to my awesome husband, Christian Oliver, for that. But in addition, I also I, I really suck at uh, taking a break or having free time. I'm not good at it. And so on the side, which is actually uh it, it, it's funny how everything ties together. My, I started a side hustle after I went through the craziest year in 2015 and then ended up applying to over 2,000 jobs and went on over 250 interviews uh, to land the job that I work at now. And I kind of felt like, okay, I have been through the trenches. I have dealt with every kind of job stuff, everything. So, um, and, and I was very open about it and very public about it on Facebook. And so I had friends who would come to me and say, hey, can you look at my resume or my cover letter? Hey, do you have any tips? And it, it started snowballing. And now I actually run a whole side hustle doing career consulting, everything from resume feedback to LinkedIn feedback. I do interview prep. Um, you know, I help people search for their dream jobs. And I also have a dream job survey that I uh, have people take to help me kind of figure out what they need to be doing and help guide them in that direction. Because a lot of times deep down, people know what they need to get enjoyment out of employment, but they maybe don't want to admit it to their, themselves or they feel like it's not like I used to about writing that it's maybe it's not feasible. Maybe it's not something that they can really do as a job. And so I'm always here to tell people, you know, yes, you can do this as a job. Yes, it's okay. You know, and I think we're all still so, especially the millennial mindset, we're so stuck in like, okay, you go to a good you get good grades in high school, so you can go to a good college, and you go to a good college, so you can get a good job, and then you get into that sort of quarter life crisis, and you're like, wait, what? What am I supposed to really be doing? You know, we were always so busy setting goals that we never sat down and figured out, oh, maybe I need to be doing X instead of Y. So, um, that's a lot of what I do on the side. I also freelance write. Um, like I mentioned, I submitted a piece to Huffington Post. I also write for um, a great website called Canva. And I call it the Photoshop for non-design people. Um, it's super easy. It's super uh, user-friendly. And you can create social media images, resumes, templates for pretty much anything. Um, and so I write for their design school. And a lot of what I do actually is interviewing other people um, about where, how they got to where they got and, you know, uh, sharing that as well as learning. And what I love about it is that it taps into my creative side. I've learned about, you know, Swiss design. I've learned about, uh, you know, how people utilize graffiti to inspire their work. And so um, I love doing that. Um, I also do social media for an MBA consulting company. Um, so Basically, I'm horrible at free time. Um, and one of my other loves is, uh, animals, especially dogs. And so I have a, uh, Pomeranian poodle mix, um, named Tallulah after the bobsled and cool runnings, um, who's our, uh, dog. And, you know, the parents have it accepted that she's their grand dog, um, to the point where they now send her clothes like you would a baby. Um, and we're also fostering a dog, um, you know, I'm not sure how 
familiar your or you know how global your listeners are but for those that are from the united yeah so for those of you that aren't in the united states we had a number of very horrible hurricanes hit different parts of the united states and one of them hurricane harvey hit in houston and um there was a number i mean and in anytime something like this happens obviously there's a lot of problems um but one of the biggest things is that it usually ends up that there are a lot of uh, abandoned animals or animals that need foster homes. And so there was a group out of New York City who uh, were asking for people that were within a four-hour radius of New York City to be foster parents. So we have a dog right now whose name is Zeus, and he's up for adoption, guys. Um, if you want to adopt him, I can um, send the web- the website link for him. But he uh, he was um, left. He was abandoned right when they um, when the storm came, and so they found him swimming along. Um, he's a little uh, chihuahua, uh, about ten pounds. But yeah, so we're taking care of him until he can find his forever home. So that's kind of my whole sort of spiel of of sort of my life and my love and my work, and then my passion is really helping people. It, it's funny your what you're doing is in terms of helping people find enjoyment through employment. I'm. I'm helping them find employment that gives them enjoyment. So, you know, I, I want to work to find people that job uh, because I feel like it is critical to love what you do. Like I never, I, when people were talking about like they were excited to go to work, I was always like, these people are batshit crazy. Who likes going to work? Now I love going to work. I mean, obviously are there days where, you know, maybe I had a few too many adult beverages the night before and I don't really want to go into work. Absolutely. Um, or, you know, you stay up late watching some show or something, you know, but I actually truly love what I do. I love my work. I love my boss. I love the company I work for. And so I now uh, want the other people to experience that because it changes your whole life. It makes everything better. It makes your relationships better. It makes your you happier um, when, when you love what you do. Because, I mean, you're at your job six, seven, eight, nine hours a day. You know, you want to love it. And so that's something that I am so passionate about. And so that's why I'm excited to be on this podcast because I am a firm believer in it. I have, speaking of Kool-Aid, I have drank the Kool-Aid yeah. on loving <laughs> the job. So. I was, as you were going through it, I was like, I was like, oh yeah, that's like, yeah, that was exactly. what was going through my mind right there. It's perfect. So yeah, I'm a big <laughs> fan of that. So, uh, you know, I think this is, if you're listening and you're not sure, or you think it's a bunch of hooey that somebody can love their job, I am here to tell you it is not, it is, it, you can find it. So. All right. So now Amanda, like you, you just set me <laughs> off on a place and I'm like, this conversation, we're only going to stay in this world here. Right. Yeah. Like we're going to stay in this world of like actually love, loving your job. And like the questions that we ask here, it's going to come from that aspect of enjoy, enjoyment. You get it. You're passionate about this stuff. You're passionate about help, helping people out here. So like, let's not sugarcoat anything. Let's <laughs> like, let's get deep. Let's, let's, let's spend this time like going through your journey and how you, uh, you experience it and like the different, different things that you can, um, that, that employees can take away as a result of this here. Um, so like, cause I, I'm, I'm hearing great things here. And like, I also want to say kudos to you, Christian Oliver. Thank you for, <laughs> you know, the, like, like being there and, and helping to see, help, helping Amanda see some of the strengths that, that she has. Cause some, some, oftentimes it is very hard for us to recognize the things that we're good at. Um, and you know, Amanda, kudos to you for being able to be to receptive of that feedback. So it's a, it's not easy to, to actually hear and to become aware, uh, on that level there. So, I mean, you're talking, th- there's so much here that, that I want to, that I want to dive into. And I, I want to try and see how you look at the world. Like, I mean, you, you said you applied for 2000 jobs, you went over 250 yeah. interviews. Like that's not a, like, like, I mean, that's, you talk, you say now side hustle. I'm like, that's an act, that's a hustle hustle right there. So <laughs> yeah. like, tell us like how I w- I'm looking for right now, like, you know, some, something that maybe you use to keep you motivated throughout that process or that you use now to keep you kind of like on track and keep your, like your, your head in like the right place. So do you have like a success quote, a mantra, some kind of motto or something that you use to keep you like guiding toward your, um, y- y- you know, your true North and your true destination? I do. So, uh, if there's any little kids around cover their ears, but my, my philosophy is get your shit done. And, you know, I also really love, there's a, there's a meme that goes around that's like, good things come to those who hustle. You know, you have to put in the work. You have to just keep going, keep grinding, keep working. And eventually something will come of it. And just believing in yourself and believing that, you know, you're working hard, you're doing what you need to be doing, you know, and obviously, 
if you're in a bad work situation where maybe your boss isn't recognizing that, then getting out, but good bosses will recognize it good. You know, and if you're working on a side hustle, I mean, that's what I just kept doing. I've kept grinding I've kept working and my side hustles exploded. And so it's one of those things that, you know, I've had, I've not had to do any advertising on it. I've just had friends recommend me to friends and, you know, it keeps going from there. So yeah, I mean, my thing is like, just get your shit done, work hard and, you know, let your work speak for yourself. And I think, you know, especially again, it's, it's, you know, with it being a worldwide audience, I know that there's certain things that we're sort of dealing here in the U.S. Uh, in terms of of women being respected, of uh, people of color being respected, and so one of the things too is that I'm always like, just bust your ass, work hard, because at the end of the day, that's going to speak for your, you know, what you can bring to the table. Um, I was at a conference two weeks ago. And John Cena was talking about that, like, you want that when they're in a moment, they're like, who can we pull in? Because we need somebody who who can do this. And you want them to immediately think of you. So that's how you get it done. You know, you work hard, you take on the challenge and you just keep working. Awesome. So let's let's dive in here, uh, Amanda, because like I love to make this personal. I love to see how you have been able to bring this to, to life here. And we can we can tell you how so in a lot lot of different ways. Why don't you take us through like a specific moment in time where you're like where you, maybe you you didn't have to choose that option, uh, but you decided to. You're like you know what I'm just gonna get it all done. Like, like, like let's go. Um, tell me about that time. Tell me about like the situation leading up. To, to that uh and and tell me about like how it impacted your actual ability to experience enjoyment well it's actually it's funny my it, it's my employment path that actually led me to that so i struggled so i first of all i went to i graduated college in 2009 right when the economy uh it totally imploded so graduating into that economy seeing all my friends get their jobs taken away. I was like, all right, well, people say that I speak well and I argue well and I write well. So clearly I'll go to law school. Um, (laughs) That just seemed like the logical conclusion. I ended up going to Wake Forest uh, Law School, graduating from there and wanted to work as a district attorney, helping people. I couldn't do the big law. I couldn't do mergers and acquisitions or write contracts. That just wasn't, didn't speak to me. I need something that gives me, you know, passion, gets me up in the morning. And so I wanted to work at the uh, district attorney's office, but the state was on a hiring freeze. So I ended up working as an executive director for um, a professional organization of interior designers. I know nothing about interior design. Um, And before I started working for them, I thought it was fluff some pillows, throw some paint on the wall. Like, first of all, these people there's a lot of science. There's a lot of like space analysis. There's a lot of uh, data on t- in terms of like how light affects your uh, ability to do stuff or like sound. Um, you know, there's certain materials they can't use in like hospitals um, in terms of design uh, because it uh, not reflects the sound, but, but, you know, reverbs the sound and that's a HIPAA violation. So mm-hmm. it, it, it was fascinating for me to get into that, but it was that kind of thing. So I was working for them and that's when 2015 hit. And 2015 was my, that was my roadblock. Um, in the space of four months, I lost my grandfather, who I was close to. My husband was hospitalized for three weeks. My, um, our only car died. And I was fired for refusing to take a $15,000 pay cut. So it was literally one thing after another, you know, and I mean, it just, it wasn't just a roadblock. It was kind of like one of those like cement rollers, yeah. <laughs> you know, like rolling over me and then backing up and doing it again um, kind of thing. And it also happened right before the holidays. Um, one thing that kept me in perspective too was unfortunately, uh, but it, the day I was fired was also the day of the Paris attacks. And that'll put your life into perspective really quickly when something like that happens. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was hard going into the holidays and you're surrounded by family and asking how things are going. And you're like, really, it's going like shit. Um, <laughs> I, you know, all these things were going wrong and, uh, you know, my husband wasn't able to work because he had just been released from the hospital. So everything was on me and then I lose my job. And so it, I hit what I consider to be rock bottom. Um, and, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me because of the fact that I hit rock bottom and I was always that perfectionist. I was always that person that was like, I'm going to get the best grades. Like I'm going to do the best here. I'm going to be in all these clubs and in college and stuff. You know, I was always top of my class, doing the best, you know, and so to hit bottom for me, all of a sudden I was like, okay, you know what? The world didn't end. The, you know, the world's still turning. Everything's going to be okay. And so 
it kind of frees you from that fear of failure because you're like, okay, well, I failed. I, I've, I've hit bottom. You know, we ended up uh, in the United States, we call it food stamps. I know they call it the dole in other countries. Um, you know, we ended up on the dole uh, for a few months because I was searching for jobs. My husband couldn't work. We needed help. And, you know, to go from, I have a law degree, my husband has a master's, um, you know, and so we are, you know, the typical, like, you would think we would be successful and we're on the dole. So we're like, you know, okay, this is bottom. But once you hit that and, and you lose that fear, then I was like, well, shit, I can do anything. Like, if this isn't going to break me, there's nothing that I'm going to do in terms of, of applying to jobs, applying to whatever that, that that's going to hurt me. And so, and I'd always wanted to write as I said, and my husband just kept encouraging me and kept encouraging me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to apply for writing jobs. And so I think that added to the reason too that I applied to so many was because when you say you want to apply to writing jobs, there are, are a bajillion types of writing jobs. You know, I mean, you can be in media, you can be, you know, an online journalist, you can be doing, you know, transcription, you can be, there's so many writing jobs. And so it's such a broad aspect, you know, that that's what led to applying to the 2000 jobs. But I just put my nose to the grindstone and I was like, look, I know I want to be writing. I know I want to be happy. I'm not going to settle because I want to really enjoy what I do. And I, I'm, I'm at the bottom, so I might as well find something, you know, I, I can't sink any lower, so I might as well move up, um, you know. And so that was really, that was my roadblock was was all those horrible things that happened but in the end, I always tell people too, it was absolutely the best thing that ever happened to me because it pushed me to find a job that I loved. And, it, and I didn't settle either. There was other job offers that came along that, you know, there was a great offer I got out of, a, well, the offer wasn't great. It was a great job I got offered in LA, but they the pay was just not there um, unless I wanted to live like in a box on the street. And <laughs> I, I would, you know, I didn't want to do that. So, and I didn't want roommates, I'm married, you know, so I was like, all right, that's not happening. Um, you know, and so it really forced me to be fearless. And that's one of the biggest things I always tell people and especially women, you know, just be fearless when you're, you're going through the employment process to find your, the job that you should be doing, because the worst thing they're going to do is not get back to you. And you know what? Like it, it, that's not going to kill you. That's not going to hurt. You know, well, it might hurt, but it's not going to, you know, be life threatening. So you might as well just try for that dream job and just go for it. And, you know, it, it's, and people are always like, that's terrifying. It is. But at the same time, it is the best choice that you can make for yourself. I mean, mm. I always compare it to falling in love. I'm like, it's terrifying to fall in love too and to be like, this is my human for the rest of my life. But people still do it all the time because, you know, it, it's right. It feels right in that moment and it feels right for that person. So why not do that with something that is, I would say, almost as important as picking your mate, just picking your job. So that was a very long-winded answer, but that was kind of my roadblock, my journey, everything all in one. So... I, I love it. Employees, we're done with today's episode. Well, yeah. no, 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 I, I, I love it because you've, you've opened up the door to so many things. And, uh, Sorry. Amanda, what I do is I, I end up walking through each of those dogs there. Uh, all these are those dogs. These are those doors. Yes. <laughs> I was, I was like, um, so employees, you're getting, you're getting the real deal here. Uh, so here goes the deal, right? You just, you, we're going to walk through each of those doors that, that you opened up here because, um, quite frankly, you, you just mentioned being fearless and like, I can see that in you. That's that OEF factor, that powerful OEF factor. So we're going to go there. Yeah. With it. That, um, that might be my new tagline, I think. Yeah. I mean, like it's, it's there. I'm, I'm feeling it. Um, so Amanda, what's coming to mind right now, firstly, is just out, so out of, out of this response here, like what, what would you want employees to walk away with? What would you want them to be able to apply like in their lives and say like, okay, this is my experience. Uh, but this is the, like the takeaway that I, that I hope you get from all this. What would that be? The biggest takeaway I hope that people get from all this is to just go for it. There's, you know, you know what you should be doing deep down. Sometimes, you know, it's parents that, that maybe don't understand that you want to do X instead of Y, you know, but or maybe it's a partner or maybe it's, you know, you've grown up thinking you wanted to do one thing and you realize you hate that. Whatever it is, just take that leap, take that journey because you're never going to regret it. And it's so important to love what you do. And so just be fearless, be, you know, tough and, and just go for it. And it's okay to be scared. Everybody's scared. You know, I mean, everybody, I always tell everybody that, you know, they're faking it 
everybody's pretty much faking it um, that you talk to. They don't know. Nobody really knows. Nobody really has it all figured out. Um, and so just go for it and try it and be fearless for sure. Awesome. So let's, let's play, play with this a little bit here because like, I love this here. Um, and what I want to do is try and help make this like concrete here. So if someone was like saying, okay, I'm ready for this here, I'm just going to go for it. Right. Like how, how would you recommend that they actually make that happen? Like what, like, and there's no one way for everything here, but like, what would you say would be like if someone's ready for to, to, to go for, especially as, as an amazing hustler as you are, what, what would you say might be the first step that they end up doing? Drop a plan. I mean, I'm a big fan of writing things down. I'm a big fan of making lists. Make a list of all the steps that you need to get somewhere and then start crossing them off. Set aside time each day like, okay, I'm going to get X done this week. I mean, I still do that. I'm, you know, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to work on that this week. You know, just make yourself a list of where you need to go and then hold yourself accountable. It, it, it's really, nobody's going to do the work for you um, unless you've got millions and billions of dollars, which if you do, I don't know that you're necessarily listening to this podcast because you probably don't even have to work for a living. So, um, you know, but I think it's one of those things that like make a list, make a plan and go for it. And there's so much out there that can help you. If you're like, I don't know how to make a plan, Google, um, you know, plan to become, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. Because as somebody who taught themselves how to edit and record a podcast off of YouTube, I can pretty much guarantee that there is somebody out there that has asked the question you're asking before. And there's also a good chance that somebody has written about it and you can find a way to make a plan no matter how, you know, no matter what it is that you're interested in. I mean, there's, there's something I've been wanting to go to for a while and you just, she brought up the 2000 jobs, you brought up the 250, uh, applications and, you know, the two things that come to mind are like, it sounds like a whole lot of rejection, right? In a time hmm. period where like, like you said, you're like, you're like, I was already at the bottom for, for me right there. Like, can we talk a little bit about like how you dealt with that, like how you dealt with that rejection? And I also want to like, would love to understand a little bit more about like how you kept that resolve to not settle. Let's start off first with the rejection piece here, because I think that, you know, realistically, from what I'm hearing from you, you had other opportunities come your way. You had other things there, but you didn't want to, you didn't want to settle for it. And if we're talking about enjoyment, like I am not. I'm not going to settle. I'm not here to just get people into another job. That is not right. the case. There are other podcasts. There are other people out there that will help you get another job. Like right. the people who are listening to this here, the employees, they are fearless. You are fearless, employees. Like, and I know yes. that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be. You'd be listening to some tactical thing. I'm, yeah, we're exactly. taking it up levels from there, right? So. But like through that, it is scary. You are like you're like you're you're off you're off the beaten path. You're the person yeah. that's like, yeah, I'm going to do something that really makes sense for me, even if it doesn't make sense to you on the outside, you know? So talk to me about that. Tell, take us to that time there because like that fearlessness there. I mean, it, it, it's interesting. It's not, maybe it wasn't fearlessness, but it was the decision to continue to hustle through the fear, whatever it is, right? right? Like take us to that time because like that's, we need to understand that. We understand how, how we can put that into our lives. Do you mind like sharing with us like how you were actually able to make this come to life? Absolutely. So, I mean, and as a writer, one of the things I did is that I, I would do two things. One, I, whenever I was upset, I would journal about it. And I have found that writing out my pain works for me. Maybe you're an artist and maybe so it's drawing or maybe, you know, whatever it is that you need to do to work through that, that's good. Also, writing down wins for the day. Um, you know, I always pick three things and it can be as simple as, you know, I got the cutest picture of my dog today. You know, like it doesn't have to be some big win, but there, every day there are wins and, and it makes you as, as cheesy as it sounds, you become more aware of different things during the day and you're like, oh, this could be a win or this could be a win. So that's something else that I think is really important. And I also read a great book during the, that time by Jen Sincero called You Are a Badass. And that was really awesome for me to get into that head space, you know, because it's hard. It is, it is taking that rejection. But you also have to remember that a lot of times it's not you personally. These people don't know you personally. So they're not rejecting you as a human being. They're not rejecting you as, as a person. They might not see what they're looking for in your resume, but that doesn't reflect on you as a person. And so separating that out for me was how I also got through it. That like these people aren't necessarily rejecting me. Like I'm a good person. I know that. And so 
reminding myself of that and, and doing good things and, you know, trying to help and do different stuff. That's kind of the thing that, um, you know, helped me get through, uh, that time period and, and just making sure that you also, and I, you know, the whole like self care, but self care is important. And, you know, if that's binge watching something on Netflix, for me, it's reading. Um, sometimes it's reading intellectual books. Sometimes it's reading people magazine. Um, you know, it, it goes back and forth, but, but taking time to do something that brings you joy is also really important. Um, and so I think finding books, finding ways to pump yourself up and understand that everybody hits the wall. Everybody gets down. You're going to get back up, um, you know, doing a gratitude journal, being grateful. And then also, you know, taking care of yourself is, is really the kind of way that you get through that sort of hard time. And, and, you know, and just from, which isn't to say, I mean, I'll be completely honest. The weekend I got fired, I stayed in my unicorn onesie the whole weekend. Um, so, you know, also mourning if, you know, if it's that you got fired, allowing yourself to, to, you know, feel whatever it is you need to feel, because if you don't deal with it, then it's going to come up later anyway. So if you're upset, be upset. If you're angry, be angry. It's okay. You know, I mean, within reason, don't like hurt anybody, but you know, if, if you've been fired or if you're frustrated or whatever, feel that, deal with that and then move past it. Um, you know, it's kind of that thing that like, yeah, I could have sat there and felt sorry for myself. I had a really shitty year. Um, you know, and I could have felt sat there and been like, this sucks. My life sucks. Everything sucks. But that's not going to do anything. And nobody likes a pity party. So just moving past it, moving forward and keeping going is the way to do it. So get me here now where like, there's so many places I want to explore. Like, like, I think it's important to stay on this for just a little bit further, but then we need to jump into your role right now and see like how you're like, you're experiencing that, that level of enjoyment there. Um, I think I, I want to focus on this first transition though, because it, there's still, there's a lot of things there. So like, what got you to, to put in 2000 applications? Like, like, wh- like, where did, where did, where did like that come from? Um, and well, yeah, why don't we start it? What, what got you to, to put in 2000 applications? I would love to understand like how you actually got your way into this, this position <laughs> here. And it's like, they're, yeah, they're, why, yeah. Why don't you start with that one there? Cause I, I just have so many questions. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, I treated, I treated looking for a job like a full time job. Um, because I was, uh, you know, I had been fired. I had a lot of free time. Um, and in that I was doing a little bit of freelancing at the time, but obviously not anything that was going to be, you know, t- paying all my bills. And so I treated it like a full time job and I would just sit down and just put in application after application, right? Cover letter after cover letter. Um, I wrote, I journaled a whole piece called The Road to Hell is Paved with Cover Letters. Um, because I was so, tired of writing cover letters. Yeah. Um, I, I still find them to be obnoxious, but it's a lot easier when you're writing them for other people than when you're writing them for yourself. But um, it, it really happened because writing covers so many different areas that there are so many jobs out there that you can apply for that writing is the major component of that it was just the amount of jobs that I could apply for and then just treating it like a full-time job and just applying, 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 um, and, you know, just, just hustling. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit here now. Then you're like, you're, you're now in a role that where you, uh, translate all these technical things, all the great things about your organization and you put it into a way that like the public can understand. Like, so we just, you just said there's all these different types of ways that you can, you can, uh, go about and do writing here. Like, how did you find this one? Like, what makes it stand out to you? Why do you feel like you're in the right place? Like, help us know a little bit more about this job and how it's bringing you enjoyment and how you're able to get some clarity based on the fact that there were so many different things that you could do with the skill set and things that would bring you joy. Well, and so I would also, you know, if I hadn't heard of the company, I mean, there were companies that I applied for that were names that everybody knows, but if I hadn't heard of it, I would do a little research and see what they were like. Um, and I would also, you know, look around at, at what they posted on LinkedIn and that kind of thing. And so I would only apply to jobs that it, were at places that I thought I might like. And then, you know, from there, uh, you know, go on to the next step. And so when I was looking for the job, um, I had, I had grown up in the South and I'm very blunt. Uh, let me rephrase that. I grew up in the Southern part of the United States. And so, Um, and I'm, but I'm also very blunt. I'm very honest. I'm very forthright. I'm kind of in your face. And that doesn't, that's not how a lot of people in the Southern United States are. They're much more, you know, polite. They're a little bit more reserved. They're a little bit more, you know, yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You know, kind of thing. 
And so a lot of people in the South would always ask if I was what they called a Yankee, which meant somebody from the North. Um, and because I was so blunt. And so I was saying to my husband, let's move to, you know, up North. Everybody always teases me about being blunt and they think I'm from there. Why not move there? So, um, you know, we really started narrowing down my job search to the sort of New England area. And I wanted somewhere that was near um, Boston, but maybe not in Boston because Boston's expensive. Uh, I mean, even outside of it, it's still expensive. But um, one of the things that drew me to this job was because I hadn't really heard content and brand strategists because I do like the strategy side. I do like the sort of planning what is and strategy and what is best for the brand. And then I also like the content part. So I was like, this job sounds really cool. Um, and then I also liked that on the job posting, this was all on LinkedIn, on the job posting, the picture on the background was of a group of the team and it looked like they were out to dinner, um, you know, so it seemed like a fun team. It seemed like a team that got along really well. Um, and then I just clicked in the first phone call with the person who's now my boss, um, who at the time was the marketing director, who's now the VP of marketing. And so that was really, you know, you can kind of tell it's like a first date. I felt like I always joked with people that I felt like I was going on a million first dates because you can tell when you click with somebody and I could just tell I clicked with her. We got each other. I was making jokes. She was laughing at them, you know? And so that was one of the signs that I was like, okay, this is going somewhere where I like. And then from there, um, continued down the path, kept interviewing and, and then ended up uh, getting the job. So what I'd like to do is just find out about a story about the time in your, in your journey where you really felt like you had like just a moment that brought you great joy, a moment that like, if your memory was, was to leave you, you would want to always make sure you had this moment. And you said that you practice gratitude. So this might be something that, that you come back to often uh, throughout it. Uh, but would you mind letting us know about your proudest professional moment, uh, the steps that led up to it and why it brings you enjoyment now? Absolutely. So one of the things that I was most proud of is that I came into this space not knowing anything. I knew a little bit about running Facebook ads, but I was not in tech. I didn't really know much about tech. And there was a piece that I wrote. So I, I started just sort of immersing myself in everything, sitting in on calls, doing whatever I could to learn. And there was a piece I wrote earlier this year because I also write copy for a lot of our clients' ads. And there was a piece that I wrote earlier this year that talked about uh, how popular emojis were getting in using copy. And it combined everything from my research ability that I learned in law school to my writing ability to my understanding of what was going on in the tech world and in what we were doing. And that piece took off. It just exploded. The Everybody loved it. The CEOs loved it. The sales team loved it. The ad ops team loved it. Um, my boss was ecstatic. It got picked up by a couple like industry uh, uh, newsletters and stuff. And so it was just, that was kind of my moment where I was like, yes, I, you know, I, I really was able to combine every aspect of me, every aspect of how I research, how I learn, how I write and take what I was doing and, and do it in such a way that, that it sort of hit all the, you know, requirements. It hit all the needs. It hit everybody's um, interest. And so that was probably one of my favorite, um, one of my absolute favorite professional moments in terms of what I've done uh, working for Orion. Now I will say in terms of semi-professional, um, our company did take us to Universal Studios for doing well last year. So that was my favorite, like, company moment um, was going to Universal Studios with the whole team because there is nothing that will bond you faster than riding a roller coaster together. But, uh, you know, outside of that, th this was my uh, writing that emoji piece was my favorite, like, professional moment when I was just like, yes, I nailed it. I got it. And everybody was happy. And, you know, it just really solidified for me my my spot because especially coming in and not knowing to be able to write a piece that everybody was so receptive to made me really happy because I, you know, I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a tech person. I, 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 you know, I'm not, I don't have some well, You are background. a tech person. Right. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> you're, I'm you're not, there. Um, you know, I didn't have a, a background in tech. I wasn't a computer science major. You know, I'm not the next Mark Zuckerberg, uh, you know, coding or anything. So to write a piece that, that really just hit it on every level, I was like, Yes, I nailed it. Um, so that that was something that I, I still uh, hold with me and I try to replicate uh, in what I do. Awesome. What was your biggest takeaway from that experience? With, and what would you want employees to walk away with uh, from that? Congratulations on it. Thank you. Go with your gut. I really felt like employee or employees. Um, <laughs> I just had the word employee in my head. I felt like emojis were just crushing it. Every time I would 
uh, add an, I, I mentioned adding emojis into using copy and then it sort of started crushing it. Um, you know, it started, you know, returning ad spend hand over fist for a lot of our clients. And so I was like, sweet. So I went with my gut and I was like, there's a story here. There's because a lot of times I, I sort of, I'm almost like a reporter within my own organization. I sort of have to find the story. And this was the first time I'd kind of been like, I have a story. I have something I need to tell. And I was like, this is going to be good. This is going to be interesting. And I went with my gut on it. And not that there was any kind of negativity or any kind of like, I had to fight for it because again, my boss is amazing. She gives me a ton of autonomy unless I'm like way off wackadoo land. She'll usually be like, okay, sounds good. Whatever. Do what you want. Um, so <laughs> she was like, you know, that sounds like a great idea. Go for it. Uh, but I went with my gut on it and wrote a story that I thought needed to be told, not something that I'd heard or something I'd found out. Um, and that was really the biggest thing I got out of it is that while it's good to get the story from all other people, when you have a story that needs to be told, going with your gut and, and going with your intuition. Look at this here. So like that, that's really, I, <laughs> I'm really happy to hear this because it's, it's cool that this seemed to be really stemmed from you. There was, there wasn't, it wasn't like, Oh, I was following the trend that like everyone else was talking about emojis and mine just happened to be like the one at the top here. You're like, this is something I yeah. think, I, this is something I see is happening. This is something that like really interests me. And you, and you went with your gut on that there. Um, there's, there's something that, that's coming to mind here around, um, really just, just stepping into that. And what, what strikes me is how you were able to bring all your experiences to the table. Like you didn't leave that law experience behind. You're like, I know how to do the research. I'm bringing it in. Yeah. You know, um, and you're able to make all this. I would love to share that, um, post if it's, if it's possible uh, on, on your page. Absolutely. If you can give me the link to it, I'll, I'll put it on there. Maybe employees can kind of see Amanda yeah. in action and see, See, well, and fun, fun fact, your brain perceives emojis as, um, as emotions. So in the same way that you would, you would perceive somebody, you know, crying, it, it, it perceive your brain perceives it as that. So it doesn't perceive it as words. It doesn't perceive it as text. And so your brain recognizes that is it much quicker. Um, and that's why we think it's doing so well is because you, you see it as part of uh, an emotion instead of just something that's, that's text, uh, that like what people are used to seeing. So that's your, that's your fun fact, weird fact for the day. Look at this. And so like, if I, if, if I'm hearing you right here, just, just thinking about the story that you were able to tell us here, I feel like this is like executive director of <laughs> interior design company, Amanda bringing out here and saying like, there's a science to this. I didn't just there throw. Is pillows in a, in a room i didn't just open up a window and say voila look at my skills exactly. you know you're like i'm not just throwing emojis up there like there's a science behind it the there brain interprets it interprets this in a, in a specific way so it's really cool how like how you're able to bring all those things up to the table and i think after he's like i'm sure amanda didn't didn't know this going into this here but like but she didn't leave anything behind and i think well, that's, and that's like, what i yeah i tell people this all the time like because people are like, oh, I don't know. Is this transferable? And I'm like, unless you were training to be a doctor, so you were taking like organic chemistry and this, that, and the other, everything is transferable. Every skill's transferable. And you don't know how you're going to use it maybe out of the box. But like, I didn't know going into law school that it would teach me how to write really quickly and it would teach me how to research really quickly. Because, you know, if, if I have to write a brief for a judge I and the judge is like, all right, well, you know, I'll be back on the bench in, in an hour. I have an hour to write a brief for the judge. I have to research the law. I have to put it together. I have to, you know, doing that aspect of it has helped me now. And like you said, too, with, with you know, finding the science in the story. That was another thing that I learned from doing interior design. So, um, well, working for the interior design, I didn't actually do any of the interior design, but, you know, working for that organization, um, you know, that helped me with that as well. So, there's aspects of every job that you do that you might not realize that that's also really helped me now with my career side hustle is that I've learned that I can help pull out pieces of like, oh, well, you must have done this. Oh, well, you must have done that. Um, you know, and, and help pull that out in terms of like, oh, well, this, these are great project management skills. You just didn't realize that, you know, because everything, like I said, everything is transferable. Everything, unless you're working in a very, very, very niche area, you can take your skills and really turn it into something else. Um, there's really no one set path. Like, you know, I always tell people, if you had told me three or four years ago that I would be working for a tech company in Boston and doing a side hustle and career consulting, 
I would have told you to like go home, you're drunk. Um, <laughs> that was just not my path. That was not where I thought I was going to be. This is, I didn't know even what my passion was. I had so many passions. I loved helping people. I loved writing. I loved doing this. And I have found a passion for helping people find their, their dream jobs. But I didn't know my passion until I went through all that too. So it's one of those things too, that it can kind of help you figure out your passion as well. Um, but yeah, just really, you know, being willing to just take that jump and, and understanding that everything can be transferred is, is kind of the biggest uh, skill set that I've learned is that, you know, I use all those skills in my job today. And that's why I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to, you know, listen to podcasts um, and, and do that kind of thing, because I feel like you can always be learning. And so I think that's also, you know, goes back to my, my mantra of, you know, get your shit done. That also means in terms of like learning, never stop learning, never think you're finished. Um, cause the minute you think you're finished, you're screwed. Uh, you know, cause there's always going to be someone younger and hungrier, but you know, just keep learning about stuff and, and keep that excitement going and, and you'll be good. So let's talk about then a little bit about this excitement. What's like, what's exciting Amanda Oliver right now in life? Like what's coming up next? Like we talked about your past. We talked about all this stuff here. You've gone from bottom to enjoyment. <laughs> what's coming up next? What's, what's in store? I think the biggest thing for me in terms of what I want to get out of the future is just really take this career consulting to the next level because I do love, I love helping people find that. And I love the, I get the best emails from people telling me how grateful they are. And so that's really kind of my thing is to just continue turning this into a bigger and bigger thing and, and eventually turning it into my full-time job. Um, because I, I love that aspect of it. I love being able to turn a passion into something that n- you know, not only brings me money, but also it it brings other people so much joy. And it, it's cheesy as it sounds. And I swear, guys, he didn't set me up for this. Um, like I keep talking about joy. It, it's true. And so I, I that's really what I want um, my future to be is to just continue down that path of just finding more joy and bringing joy to others in terms of what they want out of their lives, too. Yeah, that's a game we can play, Amanda. Yeah. That that's a game that like that I will play with and like, you know, I am I'm excited for you. I'm excited for the passion that you bring to the table. I'm excited that you're bringing your own experiences to the table here. I believe thoroughly, tremendously in enjoyment. And I also believe a lot in abundance, Mm -hmm. you know, and um, for me, I'm like the more people who are out there helping more people to experience this here then like like that's what the movement's about. That's what the movement's about. And like, and I, I really, really, really get that. Like, like you're, like you're a principal player, you're a key player <laughs> in, in this movement and, and helping people be able to uh, accomplish this. I and drank the Kool-Aid. Like, yeah. You, dra- <laughs> you drank the Kool-Aid, but like the cool thing about you is I think you also made the Kool-Aid and you yeah. like, you, you also got the ice together and you invited everyone to the party. So you're not just sitting alone and drinking it. You're like, look, I drank the Kool-Aid and now, now I know how to make it for everyone else and let's go with it. And exactly. I think it's important to put that out there because you know, quite, quite frankly, this is not something that, um, that changes overnight for a lot of people. Um, it's not something that like I myself alone can, can do that. The vision that I have here is like everyone is sitting in the, the right seat for them where they're working in a job that brings them joy so that the, the, their children, the people in their families, the, their loved ones can be inspired and motivated and feel confident in, in their abilities. And we can all move to a place where we're not operating from a place of fear and insecurity because we don't know what our next job is or we're angry at, at the fact that we're, that we have so much more skills, but it's going to waste or, or whatever it is. We're just coming from a place of actually being fulfilled on a daily Absolutely. basis, uh, yeah. and, you know, through, and through, through a place where we spend a lot of our time and a it has of, impact yeah. all the way through. So, um, Amen. I know the you, you, uh, listeners can't see me, but I am sitting here nodding my head like I my head's going to fall off. Like mm-hmm. I'm like nodding. I'm like, yes, amen. You know, I'm like testify. All right. Because it, this is there is joy. And, you know, as I say, like I always compare it back to relationships. So many people, they make excuses like, well, it's a good job or it pays the bills or you know, it's fine for now. Like you wouldn't stay in a relationship and be like, it's fine for now, but I'm not really interested in him. Like, no, you'd be like, I'm not going to waste my time on this person. So if you wouldn't do that in your love life, don't do that in your work life either. Like you, you love your work 
not as much as you love your your partner, but like you know, love it a lot because like like you said, like it affects your children, it affects your family, it affects you know everything. You're you're a happier person, you're a healthier person. You want to do more for others. You want to uh, do better for for the world, and and it, it really has such an impact on every aspect of your life, and and it touches people outside of your life too. It touches people outside of you know. People see, you know, you or I being this passionate and they're like, well, damn, maybe I should be find a job that I'm passionate about. And, you know, it it, it starts this ripple effect of, of other people going for it. So I definitely I'm like sitting over here just like nodding and agreeing and just absolutely I'm 100 percent in, you know. This is this is, why, cool. this is why it's a movement. Yeah. It's just like you know, like we're not we're not we're not settling. And I, and I know that employees out there, uh, you know, we're, we're learning from Amanda here. We're not going to settle. Um, and Absolutely. we're gonna we're gonna find we're gonna find this here. So Amanda, we're gonna wrap things up. Um, and you know, like I think what 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 I want to do here is stay actionable. If there was something that M Joyce like some someone out there has felt this and they're like, I'm in it, I'm in. I'm going for it. Oh yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. If they had to do something like one specific thing in the next week that you felt would actually move them forward in finding more enjoyment in their life and work. What would you recommend for them to do? Take my dream job survey. No, um, but I'll link. I'll link to it in, in, in your. In yeah, your yeah. No, I mean, I, I want if, employees to miss out on it. If they're not sure, take the survey. But I think the biggest thing is is being honest with yourself. We get so convinced that we shouldn't listen to our gut, or that it's wrong, or that it's not. You know, like we listen to what we're supposed to do or what we're meant to do. You know what you need to be doing. You know what you love. You know what makes you forget to eat, sleep, you know, like you. And if you don't know that, get in touch with yourself in the sense of like figure out what it is that you truly love in the next week. What is it that you love? And then and then from there, how can you bring that into your life? And how can you bring that into what you do every day? But, you know, finding that that aspect and it can be a million things. I mean, for me, it's, it's writing, it's helping people. It's, you know, I've got a ton of things that I love to do. But but so many times we don't we're too busy either doing for other people or, you know, if we're married or with a family, we're too busy taking care of the kids and helping around the house, doing this, that and the other that we don't listen to what our inner voice is saying, or maybe we're too busy trying thinking we need to work up the corporate ladder that we're not listening to your inner voice. So take a hot second, listen to your inner voice, listen to what it's telling you, because deep down, I truly believe that everybody knows what they're meant to be doing and or what they love at least. And, you know, that finding out what you love can help you figure out what you're meant to be doing if you don't know what you're meant to be doing. Um, but but listening to your inner voice and listening to that, to your gut feeling uh, is really kind of the thing in the next week. And if you can do that, if you can tap into that, that kind of opens the door to everything else. Awesome. And the man, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I'm going to ask for a quick follow up on that. How will they go about <laughs> listening? Is it like sitting in a room? Like, like how, how do you do it? Let, let me ask that maybe more specifically. That way they have something... <laughs> I mean, for me, it's writing. For other people, it might be, you know, Google different surveys you can take. Go- look up books if you like to read. Look up, you know, find a way that w- however it works for you to tap into that um, and then take it from there. Um, for me, you know, I it was reading You Are a Badass and that kind of tapped in for me what I was, uh, you know, passionate about. So, but but find, you know, there are tons of surveys online. There are tons of different jobs. There are tons of different ways that you can learn about different things, but figure that out. Um, and I always tell people, one of the questions in my dream job survey is what makes you, what is something that you do that, that, uh, makes you forget to eat, sleep and poop? Um, <laughs> and so, you know, it, but usually that's where I get a lot of the honest answers from. So what is it that you do? Cause you almost, everybody has a hobby or something that they do on the side. Maybe it's, they like crafting or they like organizing, but I feel like everybody's got something that they know that they love and then figure out what that is. And then what can you turn that into a job out of? Um, but uh, that's really the big question is, is what is the one thing that you do that just you lose all track of time, you lose all track of your surroundings and figuring that out. Um, and, you know, for some people, it might be meditating. For some people, it might be listening to music, um, you know, whatever it is that, that you feel like is a way for you to figure that out for yourself, do that and then work from there. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Amanda. You even just gave us a great question for us to be able to sit down and answer. If like we can answer this, that's going to help us figure out what, what we actually really love. So like M2E is like, th- I broke, I broke down this question for you a little bit more than, than I normally <laughs> would. Cause I, I, I actually think that being resourceful, being resourceful is one of my key values. Uh, but I, I also have been hearing this here. I know this is, this is a roadblock. This is a stumbling block for a lot of people. Like I know I want to do something, but I don't know how. Right. And the answer is none of us know the answer for you. Yeah. But as Amanda is saying, like, you already know. She believes that you really, truly already know. And she's giving you a number of different ways to start finding it. Now it's on up to you to make to make that happen. Now it's up Absolutely. to you to make that happen. And, so. and just take that and run with it and trust trust your gut. You know, you know you better than anybody else on this planet. So believe in yourself. Trust yourself and and listen to yourself. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I think <laughs> he's like this is this is awesome. I feel that we have had just a tremendous time, and I feel that you have been just tremendously open with all of us here and just like sharing your experience. It's been really, really wonderful. And the cool part about it is that we can really hear how you experience enjoyment. And like, I want to say kudos to you for that. Kudos Thank to you. you for that. Like, Thank like you. you've worked, you've hustled. I was going to say, I was going to say you worked hard, but I'm like, no, you've hustled, yeah. you know? And then on top of your hustle, you hustled, you hustle on the side. So, yeah. uh, um, I wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time here. Thank you for sharing your, your time, your energy, your experiences with each and every one of us here. You know, here is the doing the things that bring you joy each and every day. Thank Amen. you so much. Take care, Amanda. Thank you so much. So, I'm Joyce. Now you've seen why I was so excited for you to listen to this episode. Amanda brings with her her own sense of joy when it comes to working and helping people be able to find what brings them to life through work. She spent some time at the end, and I think just in terms of honoring that conversation and honoring ourselves, she spent some time telling us that like what she likes to suggest is for, to, for people to think through what makes them forget about everything else and to do it from a place of being honest with ourselves in terms of what we truly want. But as we discussed, that's not actually all that easy. If we can just sit down and snap our fingers and say, this is what I want, I think a lot more of us will be moving into this. And actually, I'll be, I'll be having... A workshop about this in the upcoming weeks just for employees so you, we can spend some time helping you define what works for you. For now, I'd love to give you a chance to share some of the tactics, share some of the things that you have done to get a lot more clarity about yourself and what interests you. We talked about a few of them during this conversation, and we'd like to talk about more over in the Employment community, which you can easily get to by going to employees.com because it is the home of the employees. And sharing with us using the hashtag joiny32, what is one tactic that you will use to identify what you truly love so you can do more of it at work? What is one tactic that you will, that you will use to figure it out? It's not an easy process. I'm not going to joke about it. It's not easy. It takes time, but it's like a muscle. And sometimes just taking the smallest step, maybe asking a friend, hey, what am I good at? Maybe thinking to yourself, what is one of my proudest moments at work? And why did it make me so happy? Maybe it's taking the survey that Amanda mentioned. There's so many options, but the thing is that you have to do something. So what we want to do is help us start getting those juices flowing, those creative juices flowing by sharing something inside of the employment community on a tactic that we'll use to explore. And we'll just keep it that simple. I'll see you over in the community. I'm looking forward to this next episode. And I cannot believe that. Wow. (laughs) We're going to have another opportunity to connect again soon. Take care, employees.